Chandelier investigates Lincoln's Overdose Crisis, sponsored by Centerpoint. Healthy minds and bodies, strong communities. Welcome back, everyone. We continue our month-long series this morning into a problem that has grown to a dangerous level this year in our community. And here's why. LPD has investigated 154 overdose cases so far this year. That's 21 more than all of 2020. During a three-week stretch at the end of July to mid-August, they uncovered 30 cases involving a combination of cocaine and fentanyl. Eight of those resulted in deaths, nine if you include an unborn child. So many of these cases involve accidental overdoses. Ten years ago, Melanie O'Hare died two weeks after giving birth to her daughter. This morning, we're hearing from her family, who spoke with Channel 8 about Melanie, her struggle, and how they are using her story to help others heal while also healing themselves. There are things that you wish now that she's gone that you wish you would have said, and then there's some things that uh, you, know, you wish you wouldn't have ever said to her. But. The memory of Melanie O'Hare remains in the town of Wilbur. Her family never forgetting her spunk and competitiveness. She kept everybody <laughs> on their toes. Um, she was loved by many. The youngest of four, Mel's fame and Wilbur spread in sports. Mel earned a scholarship to throw discus at the University of Missouri after setting the state record in the events. That record stands to this day. She was by far probably the best athlete in our family. <laughs> I was probably the worst. Still, at an early age, Mel had a rebellious side. It didn't affect her when she got in trouble, and that was the difference, I feel like. During Thanksgiving break, her sophomore year in college, Mel was involved in a near tragic crash. They hit a tree 70 miles an hour. Somehow, Melanie and three others survived. She suffered a broken femur, fractured hip, nerve damage to one of her feet, among several other injuries. Months of rehab forced her to drop out of school and move back home. However, despite taking several pain medications for her injuries, Mel didn't show signs of addiction, or at the very least, she kept her struggle hidden. A few years later, she eloped with her husband Pete in 2009. They found out they were pregnant a year later. Mel gave birth to her daughter, Jace Marie, on April 1st of 2011. She looked just like her when she was little. It's kind of like deja vu. Two weeks later, after a night out with friends, Melanie didn't wake up. Her friend called and said she won't wake up and she's blue. She she didn't wake up so they called 911 and of course they tried to do CPR but she was. An autopsy later revealed a combination of alcohol and antidepressant in hydrocordone was the cause of death. Mel had been prescribed pain medication during her pregnancy to help with the pain from injuries that still lingered from that 2005 car crash. She ran out of the prescription after giving birth, but received the hydrocodone from a friend. And I knew she was in a lot of pain because it, you know, her body language, like when she'd sit down and stuff, it, you know, you could tell that she was in a lot of pain, but I still think part of it was addiction. Melanie was just 26 years old. She died a few feet away from her two week old daughter. The last thing she, I heard her say was, I love that baby more than anything in this world. Two weeks after Melanie's death, Easter weekend, Jace was baptized. We had her baptism, it was the most beautiful baptism I've ever seen, and her daddy, Jace's daddy, sat by me and the tears just rolled and on, landed on the baby blanket and her sister, I could hear her crying in the back and then another friend was sobbing and um, when the baptism was done, we walked across the street to her mom's funeral and sat in the road. It was I feel like I couldn't breathe. It was that feeling of, oh my gosh, can we, how are we gonna recover as a family? The grief still remains a decade later. The wounds from Melanie's death still healing. And in honor of Melanie, her sister Janet tells her story. A former teacher, she speaks with 30 to 40 groups of middle and high school students a year. She hopes by telling Mel's story, she'll save lives. I just feel like if there's anything we can do so this doesn't happen to other people, that's helping us heal as well. And so that has been probably our best thing. You know, I feel like we are the closest we've ever been, but it's taken a long time. It's been 10 years. Mel's parents agree, and the entire family preaches the same message when remembering Mel. You've only got one body, and you better take care of it, because if you abuse it now, you're going to pay for it later. Life is so short. 
it's all about relationships. And if you can repair any, you know, any kind of relationship that's not going well, I say do it sooner than later. You just never know. And as for Melanie's daughter, Jace, she's now in the fifth grade living in Minnesota with her father, Pete. You can see this video right here of her. Crystal and Ray say she's a spinning image of her mom, and they are very blessed to still be very much a part of her lives. And you can find all of their stories for our Aid Investigate series on our website. Just click Lincoln's Overdose Crisis on the news drop-down bar. We'll be right back with our top eight after the break.